Welcome to St. Mary's Church on the Solemnity of the Most Holy Body and Blood of Christ. The priest celebrant is Father Frank Leoy. I am Ashley Riley, the lector. Father Justin Miller will serve as the cantor. We begin our liturgy with the singing of the entrance antiphon for this feast of Corpus Christi. He fed them with the finest wheat, Alleluia, and satisfied them with honey from the rock, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. He fed them with the finest wheat, Alleluia, and satisfied them with honey from the rock, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. In our first reading today, we see that in the desert, God gave the people manna from heaven. And in this celebration, the Lord gives us his very body and blood for our nourishment. And so as we begin, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are the living bread from heaven. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the cup of salvation. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the source of nourishment and grace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. O God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion. Grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption, who live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Remember how the forty years now the Lord your God has directed all your journeying in the desert, so as to test you by affliction, and find out whether or not it was your intention to keep his commandments. He therefore let you be afflicted with hunger and then fed you with manna, a food unknown to you and your fathers, in order to show you that not by bread alone does one live, but by every word that comes forth from the mouth of the Lord. Do not forget the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, that place of slavery, who guided you through the vast and terrible desert with its seraph serpents and scorpions, its parched and waterless ground, who brought forth water for you from the flinty rock and fed you in the desert with manna, 
a food unknown to your fathers. The word of the Lord. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. Glorify the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. For he has strengthened the bars of your gates. He has blessed your children within you. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. He has granted peace in your borders. With the best of wheat, he fills you. He sends forth his command to the earth swiftly runs his word. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. He has proclaimed his word to Jacob, his statutes and his ordinance to Israel. He has not done thus for any other nation, his ordinances he has not made known to them. Alleluia. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the cup of blessing that we bless is it not the part, a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because the loaf of bread is one, we, though many, are one body, for we all partake of the one loaf. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lo, the angel's food is given to the pilgrim who has striven. See the children's bread from heaven, which on dogs may not be spent. Truth the ancient types fulfilling, Isaac bound a victim willing, Paschal lamb, its life blood spilling, manna to the fathers sent. Very bread, good shepherd, tend us. Jesu, of your love, befriend us. You refresh us, you defend us. Your eternal goodness send us in the land of life to see. You who all things can and know, who on earth such food bestow, grant us with your saints the lowest, where the heavenly feast you show fellow heirs and guests to be. Amen. Alleluia. 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 I am the living bread that came down from heaven, says the Lord. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord 
Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the crowds, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. People quarreled among themselves saying, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, amen, amen, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the son of man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me, and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Unlike your ancestors who ate and still died, whoever eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. One of the positive outcomes of this coronavirus pandemic is the opportunity for families to spend time with each other, especially eating together. One TV commentator relate how his two sons had come home from college and how he enjoyed having dinner every evening with his whole family together. And one mother from our parish told me that because everyone couldn't go anywhere, this was the first time in a long time that the family was eating together every evening and even playing board games together. Unfortunately, this is the opposite of our church family. This pandemic has forced us to be separate from each other. Yes, we can connect through these electronic means and make a spiritual communion, but it is not the same as physically coming together as a congregation and sharing sacramentally in the very body and blood of the Lord Jesus. Now, when we do come together as a community, we consumed the body of Christ as part of the body of Christ. And that sentence may sound a bit strange, but the body of Christ is both the congregation who gathers to celebrate the Eucharist, the church, as well as the Eucharist itself. And so as St. Paul says in our second reading today, the bread that we break and the wine that we bless are a participation in the body and blood of Christ. So nourished by the body of Christ, the Eucharist, the body of Christ, the church, becomes the body of Christ in the world, participating in the mission of Christ Jesus, witnessing always to the gospel in our daily lives. Or as St. Augustine put it, we become what we consume. When we eat regular food, it becomes part of us. When we receive the Eucharist, we become what we consume, the body of Christ. And that's why the church places such a strong emphasis 
on the obligation to attend Mass every Sunday. Now, since the year 1264, the Church has celebrated this feast of Corpus Christi, or as we know it today in English, the most holy body and blood of Christ. As in every generation, some Catholics and others today may struggle with the church's teaching of the real presence of the body and blood, soul and divinity of Christ in the Eucharist. Yet for 2000 years, we turn to Jesus and we say with Peter, you have the words of eternal life. So Jesus is the source of life who is always near, always available, always nourishing us. And Jesus told the crowd that whoever eats this body and drinks his blood has life within them and indeed will live forever. So let me conclude with some beautiful words from the sequence hymn which was sung after our second reading today. And these words were composed by St. Thomas Aquinas. Lo, the angel's food is given to the pilgrim who has striven. Very bread, good shepherd, tend us. You refresh us, you defend us. Who on earth such food bestow? where the heavenly feast you show. Amen, alleluia. And now let us make our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him, all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And gathered around the table of the Lord, we call to mind our needs and the needs of the whole world. Our response is... Lord, we ask you, hear our prayer. For the church, the body of Christ, that the consecrated bread and wine we share nourish and strengthen Christians around the world. We pray. Lord, we ask you, hear our prayer. For world leaders, that they would ensure that all their people have enough to eat and drink. We pray. Lord, we ask you, hear our prayer. For those who grow our food, farmers and migrant workers, and all those who package and deliver it, enabling us to serve it on our tables. We pray. 
Lord, we ask you, hear our prayer. For those who are sick, and for those who care for them in care centers, hospitals, and hospice programs, we pray. Lord, we ask yes. you, hear our prayer. For our faith community, that the nourishment we receive from the Eucharist may energize us to reach out to others in need, we pray. Lord, we ask you, hear our prayer. For all the prayers we hold and the silence of our hearts, for all our intentions, spoken and unspoken, We pray. Lord, we ask you, hear our prayer. Loving God, you gave us lasting food for body and soul. Answer our prayers as we celebrate this Eucharistic feast. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Usually at this time, the ushers would take up the collection, but since that is not possible, we encourage you to make your Sunday offerings either by mailing in your envelope or by using electronic giving or credit card or text to give, all of which are available on our parish website. Thank you for your generosity. Our offertory antiphon, the Lord opened the gates of heaven and rained down manna upon them to eat and gave them bread from heaven Man ate the bread of angels. The Lord opened the gates of heaven and rained down manna upon them to eat and gave them bread from heaven. Man ate the bread of angels. Give ear, O my people, to my teaching. Incline your ear to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable and utter hidden lessons of the past. The Lord opened the gates of heaven and rained down manna upon them to eat and gave them bread from heaven. Man ate the bread of angels. The things we have heard and understood, the things our fathers have told us, these we will not hide from their children, but will tell them to the next generation. The glories of the Lord and his might and the marvelous deeds he has done. The Lord opened the gates of heaven and rained down man upon them to eat and gave them bread from heaven. Man ate the bread of angels. He established a decree in Jacob. In Israel he set up a law that the next generation might know it, the children yet to be born. The Lord opened the gates of heaven and rained down man upon them to eat and gave them bread from heaven. Man ate the bread of angels. 
And pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. And grant your church, O Lord, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery in the offerings that we here present. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For at the Last Supper with his apostles, establishing for the ages to come the saving memorial of the cross, he offered himself to you as the unblemished lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect praise, nourishing your faithful by his sacred mystery, you made them holy so that the human race bound by one world may be enlightened by one faith and united by one bond of charity. And so we approach the table of this wondrous sacrament so that bathed in the sweetness of your grace we may pass over to the heavenly realities here foreshadowed. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we, with all the hosts of angels, cry out, and without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this 
in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Francis, St. Hyacinth, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. And may this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Salvatore, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people that you have gained for your own. And listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord to whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. 
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord, I, I am, am not, not worthy, worthy that, that you should, should enter, enter under, under my, roof, my roof, but only, but only say, say the, the word, and, and my soul shall be, shall be healed. healed. Our communion antiphon. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him says the Lord. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him, says the Lord. Blessed are they whose way is blameless, who walk in the way of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep his decree. With all their hearts they seek him. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him, says the Lord. It has long been a Catholic understanding that when circumstances prevent one from receiving sacramental communion, it is possible to make an act of spiritual communion. According to St. Thomas Aquinas, spiritual communion is an ardent desire to receive Jesus and the most holy sacrament and lovingly embrace him at a time or in circumstances when one cannot receive sacramental communion. And so, let us pray. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot, at this moment, receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, O oh Lord, we pray that we may delight for all eternity in that share in your divine life, which is foreshadowed in the present age by our reception of your precious body and blood, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. We remind you now that public masses can take place at 25% capacity of our churches. And so if you're able to come, you're certainly most welcome. But if you still don't feel safe or you have underlining medical conditions, it's best to remain home at this time. We also remind you that because today is the feast of the most holy body and blood of Christ, here at St. Mary's we will have adoration of the Blessed Sacrament beginning at 2.30 this afternoon and ending at 4 o'clock with the celebration of Vespers and benediction. This has been a long tradition here at St. Mary's over the past few years and we'd like to continue it this afternoon again you're most welcome to come. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God.